the rise and decline of the Roman Empire was a socio-political process that had profound consequences for human history. The Middle Danube region played a key role as both a critical frontier and a crossroads for the movement of people and cultures. A team of scientists at the University of the Basque Country and Harvard University led a groundbreaking study that reconstructs the genomic history of the Balkan Peninsula during the first millennium. By analyzing the ancient DNA of 146 individuals who lived in what is now Croatia and Serbia, the team has provided new insights into this era. The study highlights the Balkans as a dynamic and cosmopolitan frontier of the Roman Empire, as well as tracing the arrival of Slavic peoples to the region. For the first time, researchers have identified three individuals of African descent who lived in the Balkans during Roman rule. The study also confirms that the migration of Slavic populations, which began in the 6th century, was one of the most significant demographic shifts in Europe, with a lasting cultural impact that persists to this day. The Roman Republic and subsequently the Roman Empire incorporated the Balkans into its territory, turning this once peripheral region into a critical hub for communication and cultural exchange. Over time, the Balkans evolved into a melting pot where diverse cultures and populations converged, largely due to the empire's economic and political influence. This transformation is confirmed by recent research, which reveals that the region's prosperity and vitality during the Roman era attracted migrants from distant parts of the world, further enriching its cultural and demographic landscape. A key finding from the study based on ancient DNA analysis demonstrates that there was a significant influx of people from the Anatolian Peninsula located in modern-day Turkey into the Balkans during the period of Roman control. This migration left a lasting genetic imprint on the populations of the region. Surprisingly, despite the Roman Empire's strong presence in the area, no evidence of Italic ancestry was detected in the genomes analyzed. These eastern populations were not just transient, but became fully integrated into the local society of the Balkans. For instance, in Viminacium, a major Roman city in present-day Serbia, scientists found an elaborate sarcophagus where a man of local ancestry was buried alongside a woman of Anatolian origin. In addition to the Anatolian migration, the study has uncovered evidence of sporadic long-distance mobility, identifying three individuals of African descent who lived in the Balkans during the height of Roman rule. One of these individuals was a teenager whose genetic origins trace back to present-day Sudan, far beyond the boundaries of the Roman Empire. Isotopic analysis of the roots of his teeth suggests that during his childhood, this individual had a diet significantly different from that of the other people studied, likely due to his exposure to a marine-based diet. In addition, the individual was buried with an oil lamp featuring eagle iconography associated with Jupiter, one of the most revered gods in Roman religion. The archaeological evidence from his burial suggests he may have been a member of the Roman military forces, implying that he was an immigrant who had traveled a great distance to reach the Balkans in the second century AD. This discovery offers us a glimpse into the diverse and cosmopolitan nature of the Roman Empire, which included people from regions far beyond the European continent. The study also uncovered the presence of individuals with Northern European and steppe ancestry who lived in the Balkan Peninsula during the third century, a time when Roman influence in the region was at its peak. Anthropological analysis of their skulls 
revealed evidence of artificial cranial deformation, a practice common among certain steppe populations and the Huns, often labeled as barbarians by the Romans. These findings align with both historical and archaeological research, confirming that individuals from regions outside the formal boundaries of the empire, particularly beyond the Danube River, were present in the Balkans long before the fall of the Western Roman Empire. Unlike modern nation-states with clear borders, the frontiers of the Roman Empire were much more fluid. The Danube served as both a geographic boundary and a vital communication route, facilitating the movement of people across its length. This permeable frontier allowed for greater interaction and migration, highlighting the complex nature of population dynamics within the Roman Empire. After the fall of the Western Roman Empire, particularly from the 6th century onwards, the study reveals a substantial migration into the Balkans by individuals genetically similar to modern Slavic-speaking populations from Eastern Europe. This large-scale movement fundamentally reshaped the genetic makeup of the region, with the descendants of these migrants now contributing between 30% and 60% of the ancestry of contemporary Balkan populations. This represents one of the most significant and enduring demographic transformations in Europe during the period known as the Great Migrations which saw widespread movement of peoples across the continent. Although the study detects occasional arrivals of individuals from Eastern Europe in earlier periods, it is from the 6th century onward that a marked and sustained wave of migration is evident. The analysis of ancient DNA indicates that this influx of Slavic-speaking populations into the Balkans occurred over several generations and involved the migration of entire family groups, including both men and women. These migrations were not isolated or sporadic events, but rather a prolonged process of settlement, gradually reshaping the demographic landscape of the region. The research further reveals that the establishment of Slavic populations was more pronounced in the northern parts of the Balkans where their genetic contribution to present-day populations is highest, ranging from 50% to 60% in modern Serbia. This influence tapers off as one moves further south, with genetic contributions of 30% to 40% in mainland Greece and as low as 20% in the Aegean islands. The genetic imprint left by these Slavic migrations is visible not only in present-day Slavic-speaking populations across the Balkans, but also in regions where Slavic languages are no longer spoken, such as Romania and Greece, points out David Reich, a researcher at Harvard University. Reich's laboratory was responsible for the recovery and sequencing of the ancient DNA samples that enabled this groundbreaking analysis. The Yugoslav Wars of 1991 led to the dissolution of the unified Yugoslav state and the division of the Balkan peoples into the various independent nations that now make up the region. This fragmentation, rooted in complex ethnic, political and historical factors, continues to influence the social and cultural landscape of the Balkans today. Despite these ongoing challenges, researchers from different countries in the region have put aside past conflicts to collaborate on a comprehensive study of the Balkans' genetic history. Croatian and Serbian researchers have worked together on this study, which stands as a powerful example of regional cooperation. Given the recent history of the Balkan Peninsula, this collaboration is particularly significant. A key aspect of the study involved the creation of a new genetic database specifically for the Serbian population, which was essential for reconstructing the broader genetic history of the Balkans. 
scientists encountered an unexpected challenge. There was no existing genomic database for the present-day Serbian population. To build this, they sought individuals who identified as Serbs based on cultural characteristics, even if they were living outside of Serbia, in places like Montenegro or North Macedonia. This effort highlights the complexity of Balkan identity, which transcends modern national borders and reflects a shared cultural heritage across the region. Despite the complex issues of national identity that have arisen due to the recent political history of the Balkans, the genetic data paints a different picture. The genomes of both Croats and Serbs analyzed in the study show a blend of heritage equally influenced by Slavic populations from Eastern Europe and Mediterranean populations. While the Roman Empire established the Balkans as a key frontier for movement and exchange, the post-Roman period saw the profound demographic transformation driven by Slavic migrations. The researchers proposed three main phases, the High Roman Empire, the Late Roman Imperial Period, and the post-Roman period, with the arrival of Slavic-speaking populations having a significant and lasting demographic impact in the region. The researchers acknowledge limitations, such as the fragmentary nature of the archaeological record, the bias towards urban populations, and the gap in sampling between the 5th and 7th centuries AD. The Roman Empire, while a powerful force in shaping the socio-political and cultural landscape of the Balkans, had a surprisingly limited genetic influence from the Italian peninsula itself. Despite the extensive Romanization of the region through military presence, infrastructure, and cultural integration, studies show very little contribution of Italic or Roman genes to the local population. This is evidenced by the near absence of Y chromosome lineages like R1BU 152 which were common in Italy during the Roman period. The Balkans were shaped more by other migrating populations rather than by a direct influx of Italic people. Please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.